Hello, Fiber friends. Welcome back to my series where I take an alpaca blanket from the animal all the way to finished yarn. In this video, I'll be showing you how I spin the fiber after it's been prepared. If you'd like to see how I washed it or how I carded it to prepare it, you can check out those videos as well. You can find those linked in the description box down below. Today, I'll be spinning two different types of preparations. One is a cloud created either from hand picking or from hand carding, and the other is roving that I created with the drum carter. So if you're interested in seeing one particular technique or the other, I will put the time stamps for those spots in the video. You can click on the time and jump right into it. So let's get started. The way that I am spinning this fiber is very similar to a woolen style of spinning. You've maybe heard of a woolen long draw. If you're interested in a very detailed explanation about how I do that spinning technique, I will also link that video down below. I'm getting a whole big collection of videos now. It's great, and I hope it's really helpful. Um, but this is going to be a little different than an actual long drop because I'm not spinning from Rolex. However, the finished yarn is very, very comparable to something that was spun from Rolex. It's a fuzzy yarn, it's a very warm and fluffy yarn, and it's, I think it's really, really pretty. Let's head over to the wheel and get spinning. The spinning wheel that I have chosen to use for this project is my Ashford Elizabeth. It is set up with the same ratios that you would see on an Ashford traditional. The tension system that I have set up for this wheel is a single drive and it is the scotch tension system. That means that I am using a brake on the bobbin to give it the tension while the drive band is turning the flyer. This is opposite of an Irish tension system and it's very different than a double drive system. So I have done a video giving a lot of detail and some troubleshooting tips about how to use a tension system like this. And so I'm just going to show you how it's set up for me right now. And I will also link that video if you'd like to go check that out to learn about a scotch tension system in more detail. For me, for this project, for this project, I have turned the bobbin so that the large side of the bobbin is the side that I have the brake going over. And the reason for that is because the more surface area that the brake touches, the more control I have over increasing and decreasing that friction. Next, I adjust by turning this knob and you can see the spring goes up as the tension increases and it goes down as the tension decreases. The way that I determine if the tension is where I want it to be is that the pull from the tension system is strong enough that when I relax the yarn in my hand as it's being made, it will be sucked up onto the wheel without folding over itself like this. But I don't want it so strong that it's pulling it out of my hands before I'm ready. So the way that I can test that is I want to be able to pull on it gently and, and be able to have it come back out from the bobbin. It's a very narrow gap where I have the tension exactly where I want it. So the way to figure that out is to get it spinning and let it intake. And there it goes. It's, it's keeping a, a taut feel to it as it intakes, but I can also pull it and have it come out from off the bobbin. That way, if I need to correct any mistakes, I can do that. So right now I have the tension exactly where I want it. I'm going to show how I spin from each different preparation in the same order that I did the preparations in the other video. The first preparation I did was hand picking. So this is called a cloud, and I will show you how I first spin from the cloud. It's pretty simple. I take a handful, just like that, 
I can put this to the side. And then I let the, the handful uh, just kind of um, clump onto the loose end of the working yarn and letting it clump on there. I do not want to let the twist come into my fiber supply. If it does that, I'm going to get a big lumpy mess that will be very tricky to pull apart and sort out. So I'm going to always hold this point with my fingers where I do not want the twist to cross. I'll get the wheel going and I will pinch the yarn together. Oh, there's a little piece. See, even with all the preparation, there can sometimes, sometimes still be a little piece of something. So I'll just pull that out. That's why I wear an apron when I spin because um, sometimes things fall out and it can get messy and I don't want that all over my clothes. So here we go. Okay, so I will very um, gently control uh, as I draft some of the fiber out from the supply in my hand and then I will slide my thumb and index finger up as I go to allow the twist to move up the yarn and as I do that I will allow it to feed onto the bobbin. So there are several things that are going on here. One is the twist is building up. Another is I am um, constantly moving this hand to put the yarn on the bobbin or allow the twist further up. And with this hand, I'm holding the fiber supply and drafting at the same time. Drafting means that I'm going to pinch and pull to spread this out for the twist to go up. So here we go. I'll do it nice and slow so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing is to have the wheel turning and that's building up the twist. Next, I draft some of the fiber out from the supply. That gives me an area to work with. Finally, I will slide my thumb and index finger up the working area to allow the twist into the yarn. Finally, I'll move the whole project towards the wheel so that it can be taken up on the bobbin. So here it is now again to show you. So I'm going to draft and pull an area apart, let the twist run up, feed it onto the wheel. Here we go. Draft, move the twist up, feed it to the wheel. So if I get an area that has broken off, it's too thin, or the twist has come all the way up, I will, this area is too thin, so I pulled it off of here, and the twist has come all the way up. So I'm going to go back to about here, and I'm just going to let this go and let this be kind of loose, and get the wheel twisting. So if I put the fiber supply next to the yarn, it's going to catch and hold on. So that's exactly where I wanted it to go. And now I can continue drafting and running my fingers up that working area and it will continue to twist. So just keep going. This does make a yarn that's a little lumpy. Uh, there can be some little lumpy parts, but I like that look. I think it makes it look very homespun. And when the yarn is plied, you won't notice those lumps in any way that will affect the, um, the thickness of the yarn. It will even itself out when it's plied so that it's not a problem in any kind of knitting project. So again, this area right here got a little too thin. So I'll pull it off the end just gently. I don't want to break the fibers. I just want to pull the fibers apart. I think I'm getting a little low in my hand. So I'll grab another, another batch here to work from and get it spinning. There we go. Just let it catch together. There it is. 
And there's no, I haven't had any problems with the integrity of the final yarn doing it this way. It's still very strong. These joins are not anything that is noticed, like having a, having a break while you're plying or anything like that. So there's another little piece of something I don't want in my final yarn. All right. So I'm going to finish off this little bit and then I'll show you how I spin from the hand cards. Also, because I was concentrating on recording this and what my hands over here were doing, as you go, you do want to move the yarn from hook to hook so that the bobbin is able to fill evenly. So this is building up a little lump right here. So I just scooted it right along. So now it's going to continue to fill up in this um, portion. You want it to come onto the bobbin as evenly as possible. The next preparation that I'm spinning from is from the fiber that came from the hand cards. So this is a little more organized than spinning from the cloud. It's laid out in, um, you can kind of see it's a little more of a parallel arrangement and I am spinning off the end. So if you could imagine this is where the hand carter was and this was the <laughs> carding cloth on the paddle portion of it. So this is the piece that came off of there. To spin from this, it's basically the same as how I spin from the cloud, but I find that this goes a little quicker because it is more organized and I don't have to stop and reconnect as often. This goes much faster for me. So again, I'm holding the fiber supply with my right hand and my left hand is controlling between my thumb and my index finger where the twist has come up the fiber supply as well as drafting and putting the twisted yarn onto the bobbin. So here we go. Um, I'm going to slow it down and show you each aspect of what's happening here. So as I treadle, the twist is coming into this portion of the yarn with my thumb and index finger, I pinch it off so that the twist only comes so far. With my right hand, I am slowly drafting the yarn, which means pulling it apart so that it thins out. And then I will, um, and then I will move my thumb and index finger up the drafted area to let the twist come into that area and then I feed the whole thing onto the bobbin. So here we go. Draft, pinch, slide, draft, slide, draft, slide, and move forward. When you first start spinning, it can feel very frustrating, like there's just so many things going on and you can't figure out what's what. At least that's how I felt when I started. So what I did for the um, very first uh, part of my spinning experience was to just play with a piece of old yarn and feed it onto the bobbin and then slide it up and down. And it really helped me to sort of find my bearings and know where my hands were going and what I was trying to do. It helped me feel the tension of the spinning wheel and all of those things. And now, I can do this in a very relaxed and a very relaxed and rhythmic way. Um, I could even watch TV, but I like to look at it and focus and kind of be a little meditative with it as I work. I think um, that's kind of my favorite way to spin. Sometimes I put on an audiobook. This works for me. Music can be a little tricky because I start to tap my foot on the treadle to the beat of the music and sometimes I'll be spinning really fast and then I'll start spinning really slow. So if I have a good beat and it's kind of consistent from song to song, that works for me. But uh, <laughs> if it's all over the place, like classical music, I can't, 
I can't spin while I listen to classical music because I'll have a Largo movement or something or, or a scherzo and, and it just, I'm all over the place. So, all right. So there's the bat from the hand cards. Next, I'll show you spinning from the drum carter. Oh, and there I was spinning and talking again. I have to move it over on the hook. This is a terribly organized bobbin. Don't do this with your spinning. Move it more often so that it fills consistently. <laughs> I'm a terrible example. Don't listen to anything I say. The final preparation that I am going to show you how I spin is the, um, it's not actually a bat, it's roving that came from the drum carter. And that's because it's a Luet Junior, so the carding cloth is more, um, it's narrower than you would see on a typical drum carter. I really like it. It gives me a really nice versatility. It's a little bit of a space saver. Um, so I, I really like the setup. This is what it looks like when it comes off of the drum carter. This is the bat. And as I unroll it, you can see it's a little bit long and narrow like roving is. And what I can do to spin from this is break it into strips, which is exactly what I do. So there we go. I'll just pull it like that and go all the way down until I have a nice long strip of fiber. And this makes the whole process very quick. So I am ready to spin from my roving. When I spin from this particular preparation, which would also work if you are spinning from uh, roll egg or maybe if you're spinning from combed top, but that could be a little too slippery. So you would have to trial and error with that. Um, so the way that I do this is I actually do let the twist come into the fiber supply because it's pulling everything into this little this little working triangle area right here. Um, it's not going to go all the way up into the fiber and clump and cause a mess like it would with a handful of the cloud. I use my thumb and index finger more as like a gatekeeper, allowing the twist to come into the fiber supply a little bit. So what I'm actually doing is pinching and opening and pinching and opening and pinching and opening and using it sort of like a like a, a check valve for the twist and as I let a little bit come into the fiber supply I pull back and draft and let a little more twist in and draft and let a little more twist in and draft and doing that I'm able to bring my left hand with the fiber supply back pretty far before I have all the twist I need and I'm ready to put it onto the bobbin. Of the three methods of spinning that I have showed you, this is by far faster than the other two and I, I think this gives a little bit more consistency doing it this way. You could spin this way from a bat that came off of a regular, typical, <laughs> wider drum carter. Um, you would just need to tear the bat into strips. And if you come to a point where you have twist up here and twist down here, but you've got a thicker portion, the twist will pool into the thinner areas of the yarn. So you can just untwist it a little, and that's where I do the, the sort of sliding technique and let that there. And now that area is fixed and ready to go on the bobbin. So there we go. And just draft, let the twist up, draft, let the twist up. As I was saying, you could do this from any uh, bat. If you just tear it into strips, you'll be able to hold a strip in your right hand, just like I am, and use this method. So there we go. Once I get a good, a good run of it, I can um, back it up quite a bit before putting it onto the bobbin. And when I get a good rhythm, this is very fun and it goes nice and quickly. So it's very, very satisfying. Now 
Now that I've spun several bobbins of yarn, it is time to ply. I hope you catch me in the next video where I'll show you how to do exactly that. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get a little alert when a new video comes up and that way you can stay up to date with all my fiber adventures. If you have any questions or there's a video that you would really like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll catch you in the next one.